If you're new or came in a little later, uh, my name's Corey, one of the pastors here. It's just great to have you with us this morning, and you've come on a great morning. We are starting a brand new series today called Transform. Today I'll go basically go over the introduction to the series and kind of set it up and then explain a little bit of what we are going to be doing. If there's any time, even have some Q&A if anybody has any questions. So, all right. So I got a question I'm going to start off with you this morning here. And the question is, do you want to live the good life? Everybody want to live the good life? You want to be happy? At peace? Content? Yeah, well, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? Okay, another question. You don't have to raise your hand on this one. Do you feel like sometimes you're your own worst enemy in that process of happiness and peace, living the good life? Another question you don't have to answer. Do you do things that you know aren't good for you? Things that you then later regret? Kind of rhetorical questions. Isn't it? <laughs> Those things you do that you don't want to do, those things you think that you don't want to think, things you say that you don't want to say, would you like to stop that? Would you like to stop doing things you then later regret, have to apologize for? I'll tell you one thing, apologizing is a phenomenal, phenomenal tool to keep the ego at bay, isn't it? To stay humble. I've spent a decade almost researching the elusive question. How, in fact, do we as humans actually change? And by change, I mean change from the inside out, heart transformation, not just external behavior modification. Because we all know that we can put on a happy face for a day, right? We can put on our Sunday best and our smile and our makeup, you know, do our hair, get it, you know, colored and get our teeth done, you know, we can... We can, we can adjust external behavior, but it doesn't last. It doesn't actually do anything to the heart, does it? It doesn't change the heart. So in this series, we've discovered, and we're going to share those, discovered some Practices and some ways that will have the potential to transform your lives, transform our lives from our heart out. From our heart out. So let's start with Jesus. Jesus said, Come to me. All who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you. Is light. We believe Jesus to be 
the most brilliant human that ever lived. But not just that, but actually to be God in the flesh. That he came to reveal to us what God was like. That he came to show us by his life and his teachings how to live the good life. So the teachings of Jesus are, if you read them, they're very practical. They're very down to earth. But they can also be kind of hard and difficult. And they can seem actually completely opposite to the way the world works. But as Jesus, the most wise teacher and God to have ever lived, he's telling us the way the world is. The way the world is. Now, if you were a first century Jew and you heard Jesus in the synagogue or teaching to the crowds, you would kind of think of him as like this radical rock star professor. Right, you know, there's always you know, every once in a while there's the professors that come along that kind of make a splash. And one that comes to mind now is Jordan Peterson or some of the other that actually is gets kind of this fame outside of the university or outside of just students. But this would have this would have been how you would have viewed Jesus. Ninety, uh, sixty of the ninety times that Jesus is addressed, he's addressed as rabbi, actually teacher. That, that's, that's how they viewed him, as a, as a rabbi, as a teacher. Now, all rabbis had disciples. They had students or apprentices. But most of the rabbis were very selective in who they allowed into their apprenticeship. It was very much part of the Jewish educational system. In the Jewish educational system, they had... Uh, a class that went through 12, basically, and that's where students went to school and they actually memorized the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. By 12 years old. Right? <laughs> Makes it make you feel stupid. <laughs> it does me. It's like, wow. By 12 years old. Most, almost all, then, stu students were done, and, you know, the, the boys went off into their careers, the girls went off and got married by 13, 14, they have come a ways, I would say, huh, on, on women's rights, <laughs> but, you know, that's pretty much what, they were adults, right, the bar mitzvah, everything, that signaled adulthood, right, in that culture, 13, which it did in most older cultures. You didn't have teenagers, you didn't, didn't have the luxury Right, of, of being this teenager. You actually had to go and start working to not starve to death. But some of the best and the brightest went on to school till 14 or 15 to learn more of the, what we would call the Old Testament, the, the Hebrew Scriptures. But only the best of the best did a rabbi call out to be his actual apprentices, his actual disciples. And this is what's so radical about Jesus, because here is this young, radical rabbi, right? He is, he is even history outside of the Bible, um, Josephus and other historians, it shows that he made a huge splash on the scene in Israel when he, when he emerged on the scene somewhere around 30 AD, teaching, teaching. And, and yet, he says, come to me. All who are weary and be my disciple. Take my yoke. The yoke was like the yoke of oxen where they yoked two together. And that was a, a Hebrew idiom for 